Number 37. The moon and earth rotate about their common center of mass, which is located about 4,700 kilometers from the center of the earth. This is 1,690 kilometers below the surface. Letter A. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration due to the moon's gravity at that point. All right, so here's a nice complex picture it looks like, right? There's, so there's a lot of stuff going on. So first things first. Black is the earth, red is the moon. They have a common center of mass between the two. So between the um, center of the earth and between the center of the moon, the common center of mass between those two points is going to be located right here, the problem is mentioning. And this problem is located, uh, excuse me, this point is located 4,700 kilometers from the center of the earth. Okay. Now our first job is to calculate the acceleration due to moon's gravity at this location. All right. So we've uh, developed this idea now for the past several problems. All right. So remember, I said, uh, I think even in the last question, uh, it probably is beneficial to just, uh, you know, recall this formula um, off the top of your head and to memorize it, you know, add it to your list over here on the right hand side. So the centripetal acceleration uh, will be equal, and that is the acceleration due to gravity, it will be equal to the gravitational constant multiplied uh, by the mass of that particular object you're trying to find the um, centripetal acceleration of, or the acceleration due to gravity of, divided by then the distance uh, between the point and the mass squared. Okay? Uh, to if, if some of you might be just joining me here on number 37, look at any of the past... Um, you know, seven problems that I've done. I've kind of derived this in all, in all cases, spoke about it in depth. So uh, just take a look at one of the prior videos there uh, in case you're having a little trouble where this comes from. But just so you know, it comes from these two equations over here on the right. Okay, basically just substitute F in for F and then cancel the mass and voila. Okay, so now um, all we have to do is start plugging some values in, right? So remember this mass is the mass of the moon. So I have my centripetal acceleration is equal to the gravitational constant, which is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the moon. Okay, here's the mass of the moon. 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd, all divided by then the distance between the center uh, of the moon and this particular point. All right, and how do we find that? Well, I do know that the distance between the center of the moon and the center of Earth is this distance in yellow, 3.84 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. Okay, so then what would, how can I find the distance between this point and this point? Well, all I'd have to do is simply subtract out, right, the 4,700 uh, kilometers. Okay, and that would then give me this nice value right in here. All right, so uh, let's plug that into the formula. Recall that, uh, not recall, but take a look. Uh, these are uh, distances in kilometers, all right? So um, I need to convert those to meters. So simply just multiply them by uh, 1,000 or add three to the exponent if it's in scientific notation or add three zeros if the number is not, okay? So we'll do those very quickly here. So 3.84 times 10 to the eighth, all right, minus 47, it was 4,700 before, but now I add the three zeros, one, two, three. Okay, so now it becomes 4.7 million, and that whole thing will be squared. And that's all we gotta do. Just plug it on in now. So 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11, times 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. Divide that by now, parentheses, 3.84 times 10 to the eighth, minus um, 4,700,000 squared. So we get a value of about 3.4, right? 3.4 um, times 10 to the minus 5. Great. Okay, so that is the acceleration due to gravity of the moon at that particular point. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. And this is letter A. All right, now let's move on to letter B. So it says calculate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the center of the Earth as it rotates about that point, meaning the point of common mass, um, once each lunar month, which is about this many days, and compare it with the acceleration found in part A. Okay, 
So basically what this is asking, here's the center, here's the common center of mass, and this whole system, you know, rotates about this common center of mass. So meaning the, uh, the center of the Earth will make this trajectory, okay? It's going to make this trajectory. That's one of the best free-handed circles I've ever done. Um, the center of the Earth will make that trajectory over time, right? So in, um, you know, at one point it'll be over here, then it's going to be over here. You know, the center is always at the middle, then it's going to rotate over here, okay? So I hope you get the picture, you know, how it's rotating around this way, the center would be, all right? So um, now our job is to try to figure out um, the centripetal acceleration of the center moving about this point. So now this becomes the circular problems we've done a ton of, right? Uh, what do we need to know in order to solve this? So it tells us, it gives us essentially, it goes around once every 27.3 days. So didn't they really just tell us the angular velocity? Right? Didn't they just say how fast it's going to go around? In one revolution, it's going to take 27.3 days. They just told us that, right? So basically, omega, not the right units though, but it says for every one revolution, it takes 27.3 days. Now we need this in radians per second, right? So get rid of revolutions, put radians on top, 2 pi radians. For every one revolution, there goes the revolutions. Now I got to get rid of days. Remember, I need radians per second. So days goes on the top and then hours goes on the bottom because I know that there's 24 hours in a day. So bye bye to days. And then know this conversion that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. If you didn't know that, you can go then to, instead of seconds right away, go to minutes and then go to seconds and it'd be 60 times 60, which is essentially 3,600. All right, so the hours cancel. Hence leaving me with radians per second. So now let's calculate it, all right? Now we'll have the right units. So it's 2 pi divided by parenthesis 27.3 times 24 times 3600. And it works out to be a value of about, what do we got here? 2.66, right? So we got a value of 2.66 times 10 to the minus six. And that is in radians per second. Now those are the right units for angular velocity. Oops. Okay. So now, where can I go from here? Well, remember, the whole goal is to try to figure out centripetal acceleration. So here it is in my formula. All right. Um, so centripetal acceleration I can find by finding the linear speed over r. So why don't we write that down? Um, I'll write it up here on the top right. So the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared, v squared over r. I did the conversion here first, guys, just so you see that I, hey, I actually do have angular velocity, so you can see where now to take this substitution, all right? So realize we don't know the linear velocity, but wait a minute, we do know the angular velocity. Oh, is there a relationship between linear and angular? And there is, look, this one right here, right? So what I can do is I can essentially take this part of the equation and plug it in for V. And then I will be able to get my answer because then I'll know all the pieces to the puzzle. Right, r omega squared over r. Okay, this simplifies down to, you don't have to do this, but this simplifies one of the radius will cancel down here, and then this would become squared, but that would cancel. All right, so you'd be left with here r omega squared. All right, and now we can plug our values in. So now we have here, oops, we have the centripetal acceleration equaling the radius. So what's, so let's go back to the picture. Here's the circular path that I just described. What's the radius of it? Ah, 4,700, right? Kilometers, but what do we need it in? Meters, right? So just take 4,700 and then add the three zeros to it. So now it becomes 4.7 million. And then take that and then multiply it by, man, I just realized I'm running out of space here. Let's move it over. So then just take that and multiply it by 2.66 times 10 to the minus six because right, that's the angular velocity and square that baby. So here we got, let's see, 4.7 million. All right, let me just make sure, hold on. 4,700,000, right, same thing, times 2.66 times 10 to the minus six squared. And look at that, 3.3, 3.3 
times 10 to the minus 5. All right, so that takes care of that. That's letter B there. All right, this is all letter B. And now, what else? They comment on whether or not they are equal and why they should or shouldn't be. Well, I mean, if you look at the numbers here, right, comparing this answer to this answer, you'll say they're not equal. Um, but yes, they are not. I mean, it is evident. But uh, most likely, you know, this is probably an approximation here. What's the chance that it's exactly 4,700 kilometers from the center of the Earth? I doubt it is. So they're just giving us a nice number here. So they should be the same. All right. They definitely should be the same. And um, and why they should be the same is because there's the same the same forces acting on both objects. Right. There's this is one whole system. Right. This whole system is rotating around this particular point. So therefore, the acceleration that the Earth experiences should be exactly the same as the acceleration of the moon at this particular point, which we found uh, in the first part. All right. So hopefully that all makes sense. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.